Assalamu alaikum and good morning everyone. You know, I was wearing a jacket earlier and I realized that it will be better for you and me than if I'm like this. Right? Happy? Very good. Raise your hand if you are happy that you are here this morning. I realize the students raise their hand faster than anyone else. Which is exactly what we like to see this morning. Well, nice to meet all of you and uh, first of all, thank you VP for taking this initiative. Uh, together with the Minister of Education. And when we talk about the leader in me, the most important thing that I wanted to share before even I go with my slides is the, is the slide pointer here? Uh, okay, very good, okay, good. Before I even move ahead with uh, my, my slides is, what gets scheduled gets done. Early October, VP and the Minister of Education invited us for a discussion, me and my friend Masood, <laughs> to share an idea about teaching leadership values to students. And right then and there, we decided that we're going to do this on the 22nd of October, which is today. Right? We're here. Right? So everybody, look at the person next to you and say, Tada, we are here. Come on, do that, everybody. <laughs> right? Because, the, you know, there's so many people talk about good ideas because, you see, anyone can have a good idea. But it doesn't become valuable if you can't get it done. And I'm, you know, I was really impressed with it that it happened the day we decided because most part of the world, we have a good idea, but there's a saying, there are people who are getting ready to get ready. And I'm glad that we aren't one like that, right? So let's give yourself a round of applause, everyone. Now, I have an hour, which means around 10.30 I should be done, and as per the agenda, there's a break. The way I do these sessions is not just me speaking the whole time. I know there are some students here that have had the opportunity to teach some of these in the schools, some of the principals I have met, some of my teachers are even here in this room. So I thought we we're going to have a great conversation. So I'd like to get us get started. Ready, everybody, take your two hands up. Two hands up. It's a Saturday morning, and it's the youth day for the morning, so let's show some youth spirit, everybody. Ready? So rub your hands together. Rub, 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 rub. Those who have been to my friends, you know what we are about to do. And clap three times. One, two, three. Keep your hands like this. When I say go, you turn either to your right or left, and you give high five and say, please be my learning partner. Ready? One, two, three, go. Give them high five. Now. So in 2009, when we lost all the tournaments, around 2 o'clock in the morning, my boss at the time, the general manager of Baranoli Ritiva, sent me a text message at 2 o'clock in the morning and said, Afif, I need to see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. I mean, this is 2 o'clock in the morning. Do you think I was able to have a good sleep that night? Uh, yeah, you're most likely right. <laughs> So 9 o'clock I went and I thought that Jim is going to have a really tough conversation with me and to say, look, Afif, I think it is the time that we deserve the only work here, we can't do this. But he asked me a question. He said, Afif, what do you think you can do better so that this team will win next time? And I said to myself, oh, this is a very good question and um, I need to think about it. So well, you come and see me later today because whatever you need, I'm going to give you. But I think you need to get this going. So I did a bit of reflection exercise, took notes, went and saw the GM. I did not ask for any single, you know, um, money, you know, or resources. I just said, I know what I need to do. I need to be a better leader for my team. I spoke with a few people, organized myself, organized the team. 2010, the first tournament, we were the champion. 2010, second tournament, we were the champion. 2010, yeah, yeah, give a round of applause. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. very good. What to celebrate? 
And believe me, up until I leave that company, 2010, 2011, 2012, we were the champion in all the tournaments because the leader in me completely changed the way that my team saw me as a team manager. What do I give credit to this? It's the values that I was able to bring up in 2010, a complete change in my mindset. Because the world we live in is delivered not through just a title or a position. Believe VP shared some great sentiments around good leadership. Let me ask you a question, ask the person next to you. How do you define a good leader? What would be your answer? Come on, have a conversation with the person next to you. 10 seconds, talk to each other. How do you define a good leader? Good. How do you define a good leader? Let me ask you uh, ask for one of the uh, wonderful students here. By the way, all of you are wonderful students. Yeah. Turn to the student next to you and say you are a wonderful person. Come on, do that. So let me ask from you. What's what's your name? Hmm? Ma. Ma. I remember you. You were from Darmont, right? I remember we did a session with you, right? Yeah, I remember you. Very good. What is a good leader? How do you define? Someone that is not afraid to lead. Wonderful. I get asked this question man, you know, many times, both here in the Maldives, everywhere else in the world I've spoken. My definition is very simple. And I believe VP highlighted that a little bit. A good leader is, the, is a good human being. Because you cannot say, well, I'm going to lead from Monday to Thursday. And Friday, Saturday... Don't look leadership in me. And you're not a good leader because you are either a leader or not. There is no like in between. For example, next week you have a long weekend and you say, hello, bye-bye. Until I'm back to the office, I'm not a leader. And all the students here, by the way, you are a school captain, deputy captain, games captain, different positions that you have in the school. You are a reflection of your school. When I'm a leader of my organization, yeah, let, let's write that down, write that down, other stuff, write that down. You are a reflection of your school because if you are from Darumamanta, if you are from Kalafan school, if you are from Huravi school, if you are from Gazi school, you are a representation of your school, not just here, anywhere. When I was the deputy captain of Center for Higher Secondary Education, the best time during my school when I was chosen to be the deputy captain, I even walked like the deputy captain on the road. Oh, no, trust me, trust me. At the time, the principal was Madam Amira. You can ask Amira. When I enter the school, everybody knows I'm the deputy captain. Because I walk, I talk, I, everything is like the deputy captain. Because my students in the school deserve the best of me. Not my average. Because when I'm the deputy captain of the school, I cannot come to school and say, hello students, please expect average from me today. <laughs> it's not going to happen that way, right? So important. Imagine if you're a school leader or any wonderful leaders over here with years of experience. You walk into your office on Sunday. And you enter into the office or your school as a student. You're not in a good mood. They're going to look at you, right? What are they going to think of you? They're going to say to each other, what happened to him? What happened to the captain? You won't hear the conversation, right? Therefore, as a leader, we have no choice. Either you are in a good mood or you're in a bad mood. That's the reason why the best leadership lesson you can learn is to be a good human being. Because when you are a good human being, you live by those good values. Smile, greet everybody, say hello, show the way to people. You see something on the road, pick up and toss into the dustbin. I will share a story that I learned 10 years ago towards the end of the session, which is very important. 
Sorry. Now, I believe everybody in this room agrees. Ask the person next to you. Are leaders born or made? Come on, talk to each other. Five seconds conversation. Who said the leaders are born? Good. Uh, certainly, in literal meaning, like Minister of Education, just I agree with him. One says, I don't want to meet an unborn leader. You know what that means, right? But I think literally what we're saying is we agree that leaders are made. Because no one is born with values. Because, for example, when Masood Ali was born, his mom did not say, Oh, my son is going to be a motivational speaker and senior director of customer service in Dirago. By the way, did your mom do that? I mean, you don't recall. I mean, that's a true story, right? Because everybody in this room, I mean, your parents are so proud of you, by the way. Regardless of what position you have. And all the students are watching this from the TV, by the way, your parents are proud of you. And we are all heroes in our own way. But along our journey, whether you're a student, student leader, School teacher, principal, a senior leader in the nation, you develop your leadership through the learning experience. Now, let me share a couple of things which I wanted to show you. Our world, by 15th of November, the forecast shows that the world will cross 8 billion people. A lot of people. I think the last time I checked, the Maldives population is somewhere half, closer to half a million or a little bit more, I believe. Uh, the latest census data shows such. Eight billion people, and these eight billion people in the world is divided into three different categories. Let me show you one. So one of the categories, so you have three different categories, and the one in the middle are those people who wakes up in the morning Everything's okay for them. I really like the part that VP shared towards the end. Because in a world that is so connected, we have to look around what's happening in the world. Because 20 years ago, for example, when something happens in Europe or in the West, we could say, what does it have to do with us? Not today. So if the prices of oil, right... The fuel is, you know, increasing. We have to be concerned. Those who are in the middle, they say, it's okay. You know what it's okay sounds like? Meh. Meaning, you know, I'm alive, I don't care. But no, 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 no. Good leaders will never use the word, I don't care. Regardless of the context that you say, you will never use the word, I don't care. You do care. You have to care because that's what makes you a leader. Now, downward, you have the other type. These are people, they see a problem, they see more problem. Everything is a complaint. Right? It's raining. Complaining. Sunshine, complaining. Right? Good weather complaining, bad weather also complaining. Right? I can see all the students are going like, yeah, yeah, I remember some like that. <laughs> right? Because you wake up in the morning to go to school, you probably didn't even realize it was raining the whole night and the roads are flooding. It is that moment your leadership comes out. Whether to say something bad, or whether to accept the challenges that we have, and even if you need to remove your shoes, remove, walk through the water, and still walk like the deputy captain of the school. Which I did, by the way. Because in those days, Lili Magu, as a, you know, Chandan in that area, we used to have a little bit, not now, right? But it's always a challenge there. So this I call them the victims. They may also have a leadership title and a position. For them, they're always looking for the problem. They can see an opportunity here. Right? And I think as we are celebrating the 50 years of all this tourism, it's a good point to see because 50 years ago, a group of the UN advisory team come, came and said, 
This is not possible. Today we have the most expensive destination in the world because our pioneers saw this island and they did not see an island. They saw a beautiful resort. You know when you look at this door, right? You can see two things, just a door. But I see a different thing here. I see endless opportunities. The other day I took one of my colleagues to uh, walk in our, my workplace and there's a, uh, there's a building and outside the building, there's lots of garbage there. So I said to him, what do you see here? He said, uh, it's garbage, we need to clean. I said, oh, I can see that, yeah. I said, do you know what I see here? I see a beautiful garden. And he goes like, huh? Because there is no garden there. I said, and then he's so confused. I said, don't worry, don't worry. I said, you just observe, right? So I called the head gardener. I came. I said, Monday. So that was a Thursday. I said, by Monday, can you make here a garden? Because I see a garden here. Of course, the gardener understood it. You know, the gardeners, they love garden, right? So he said, yeah, we can do it. By Monday, there's a garden. I brought my team here and I said, look, what do you see here? And they all go like, ah, leadership lesson. So now when I ask them something, even I ask them the garbage throw in there, I said, what do you see here? They tell me it's a garden. <laughs> the other type of people you have in the world are the one on the top. Positive attitude. When they are asked to serve, they yes, say yes. With every problem, they see an opportunity. They make good choices every day. This is the victim. So in the world we live, we carry two types of... And by the way, there is nothing wrong with these three types of people. Yeah? It's the choice we make. I'm not saying... And by the way, my philosophy of leadership and teaching is this. There is not a single one in the world that is a bad person, a difficult person. It's their circumstances that led them to behave the way they behave. Right? So there's no bad customer, there's no bad student, there is no difficult customer, there's no difficult student, there's no difficult teacher. I mean, everybody is a wonderful person, but it's how we see it. Because when I see you, I don't see you as a difficult person. I see you just as a wonderful human being like me. You have your own problem, I have my own problem. Therefore, I choose to be a victim. Because the world we live in, students and everybody in this room... There's two types of world we live in, the inner world and the outer world. Things do happen without us not even knowing. This morning when I arrived by a car, there was a little bit of traffic. I got out of the taxi and um, you know, I was to take my laptop bag. It took a while, obviously. <laughs> and what happened was that the cycle behind me just horned. You know how that works here, right? What do you think I did? Yeah, I look at the pastor and say, Hi, good morning. And he goes like, huh? Because you had two choices. One is either you get up on the car and you go like, Oh, hi, good morning. Because it's just literally five seconds, by the way. That's an example of victim. Another example for all the students is taking all the notes and please go back and teach this to all, all the other students. Now raise your hand, as students, if you will teach this in the next two weeks to some of your students. Please raise your hand. Good, good, good. Now all the students, if you will take responsibility and teach this to other students, and if you want us to come and teach this in your schools, if you believe this will help you and students, all the students, if you believe like that, please stand up. I want to see. It's good. All the school students, they actually wait until their captain stood up. Interesting, right? Yeah, please sit down, please sit down. Wonderful, wonderful, right? So the world we live in, there are two, I mean, three types of people. The question I want to ask you is, what's your choice? What, who do you, what type of person you want to be like? Talk to each other in your group, please. Talk to the person next to you. What, who do you want to be? Victor, victim, or a person who's ever, where you believe everything's okay? Ten seconds conversation, please.
<laughs> Are you having a good time? Yes, you're enjoying? Now, we're celebrating the National Youth Day. And when we look at recognitions and awards and celebrations, I also would like to highlight that since the Youth Awards, when, when, since its inception, the first person who received that award is the Vice President, Faisal Asim. So let's give VP a round of applause. You know, I'm not saying this because VP is here. We both had an opportunity to work in a similar industry, hospitality industry. When I see people, I do not see them through the title they carry. I see them through, what do you think? Exactly. Oh, you remember from the session? Wow, wonderful, because she was in one of my sessions that we did, right? What's your name? Shazun, right? And, uh, sorry? Shazun, right? Let's give Shazun a round of applause. I think this is a wonder. She remembers it, right? Because I, you know, when I see Masood, I see Masood through the valleys. When I see Ahmadi, I see through the valleys. When I see Samir, I see through the valleys, right? That's exactly. So turn to the person next to you and say, I see you through your valleys. So now why don't you take a moment, talk to each other in your group. What are your leadership values? What are they? Right? Come on, come on, talk to each other. Let's take about a minute, 60 seconds, talk to each other. What are your leadership values that you will not trade for anything else? Ready? Talk to each other, please. 10 seconds. Sorry, one, uh, one minute. All right, all right, let's keep moving. Now here's a slide I wanted to share because the world we live in, two worlds, right? Remember my taxi story this morning? That happened at my outer world because I didn't have any control over it. The inner world is how I responded to that. People can treat you in different ways that you cannot even imagine. It is your choice how you want to respond. I tell you one thing, every night when I go to bed, I always go to bed with a peaceful mind. And do you know why? Because I have no one that I need to forgive. I have no conversation that I need to finish because I already did that. When you want to be a great leader, you cannot have a heavy heart and serve people. People are going to do tough things. I mean, you know, when I was a CHSC deputy captain, since we have most of your students here, I had tough times because not all the students did like me. But my job was not to make students like me. My job was to help them and make them even, make them even better students than anyone else. They say for the very first time, we form a business society in CHSC and I became even the president because I saw a need and we took all the students to the Fedimer and the Coca-Cola factory for the first time because I saw something in my students than any other students because that was the first year in CHSC we had the large number of students almost equal into science stream and we were in the business stream see that? right? that's the point I'm talking here about Oh, that's all right, that's all right. We've got to keep going, we've got to keep going. <laughs> that's okay, that's, let, let, it, let it enjoy, let it enjoy. Students, don't worry, you didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> so the inner world is our thoughts, and the outer world is how we react to it. Let me ask you a question. If someone said something to you that you do not appreciate, how would you react? How would you react? Well, talk to, the, talk to your learning partner, please. I want to have a conversation. Ten seconds, talk to you. How would you react? Or you would say, just thank you. Oh, that's, you're very nice. <laughs> or you will smile and say more. 
More of the same? <laughs> Let's see from here. What do you think? How, if someone says something to you, what would you, that you didn't really like, what, how would you react? Mm, good, good, good. Do you know in the, in the uh, outer world that we live, there are two things. One is, one is what I call as noises. Noises are things that people say to you without any facts or evidence. They just say it because they thought it's okay to say it. But then you also have voices. So noises, and, so noises are like blah, blah, you know, he said, she said, you know, Somebody will bring something to me and say, hey, I heard someone said this about you, Afif. So my first question is, did you hear? Said, no, someone else told me. I said, that's all right, leave it. That's why I'm able to have a good night's sleep. Because my sleep is more important than anything else. Because if I have to think about it, right? Nothing is going to happen, nothing is going to help me. And that's the whole example. When we, when Masood and I and other facilitators, when we do this in school to all the principals, we're going to drill this down into the student's mind and understand and link with the competencies in the education framework. Because all the values of how do you handle this is actually there. Because the Ministry of Education team, they already shared this with us. Because in an inauguration event like this, we're not able to conduct this in a workshop style. When we do that, the students, the captains, the school leaders note that there's going to be a whole activity that they do. By the end of the exercise, they're going to understand their values. And we will guide them to lead through them. Yeah? So this is the, entire, the first part of my teaching. In the world we have and we live, we have two choices. To be a victor and a victim. What's your choice? Yeah, I had some of you said, Victor, ask the person next to you, what, 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 what do you think? Well, and, 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 and by the way, give an example to each, the person next to you, of living like a victor. Right? So how many of you want to live as a victor? Raise your hand. Good. Anyone who wants to be a victim? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ustavan, I will talk later afterwards. <laughs> right? So, give an example to the person next to you on living the life of a victor, please. Talk to each other. Just uh, about 20 seconds, please. Now let's talk about values because if you can only live as a victim or a victor based on the values that you live, when people see you, they see you through your values, not through the title or the position, not through your credentials that you have, people see you through your values. Turn to the person next to you and say, people see you through your values, tell them. So where does these values come from, right? I want to show you something that was developed by Simon Sinek. He's an international speaker, he's written a couple of books. Simon Sinek, a couple of years ago, came with an idea called the Golden Circle. When you look at this so from here, you see there is a why, there is a how, there is a what, right? So if you're a leader, what is your job? Your job title, what do you do? How is how you get things done? Why is why you do what you do. When your values are ingrained in your heart right over here, you know exactly what attracts you, what are the things that you will say no. So when VP and the Minister of Education requested that, you know, we need your help to get this done, what do you think my answer was? Who said, let me think? What do you think was my answer? Come on. Exactly. Because the values of getting things done and contributing is right in here.
Where did I learn that leadership values from? From my father. My, I am from a family where we have eight members in our family. So four brothers and four sisters, so including mom and dad, is a football team. <laughs> one of my brothers is here. <laughs> he's, he's the eldest one. He probably will ask a question later. But <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> so my father is a fisherman, a very famous fisherman. And when I was a child and growing up, believe me, there are days because of bad weather, the catch for the day is very little and small, yet he will always make sure a distribution of the daily catch is given to all the nearby houses before even we eat. And who do you think went and delivered those things? Me. He also went, but he will, the, the contribution he gets, he asked me, come on, go and do it. <laughs> and we are the elders, so you're going to follow the jury, right? <laughs> but true story, true story, by the way. And, and those days I keep on asking myself, oh my God, why would he do that? Because we, we know, we're the family, we should get the fuss. But he said, no. We are here, and my father said to this one day, we are here to make this world a better place. And you can only do this with being in service of others. So when VP asked me the question, and then we discussed and with the Minister of Education, both Masu and I said, yes. I woke up this morning, 4.30, went to gym, got on the seaplane, landed in Malay up it was raining. I'm here, 8.30. Because, yeah, give a round of applause. Yes, 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 very good. Yeah, yeah. Because the service values is in me. Nobody needs to wake me up for this event because it's in here. That's what happens when, so the why is why you do what you do. The why is your values, by the way. We don't have time in this session to get all the values identified for all of you. But I thought I want to take a moment to share what my values are. These are my values. Excellence. What does it mean to me? Every day, do something that makes the lives of other people better. Like today, integrity, doing things right when no one is watching. I strive, I do my best to do that every single day. If I make a mistake, I make peace with it, I apologize, I forgive, I move forward. Leadership, I don't wait for people to tell me, hey, Afif, take leadership here. No, no, no. I see an opportunity, remember like the garden story? Yeah, I see a place like that, I see a garden. <laughs> Taking leadership, so nobody has to ask me, Afif, I need your help. If they ask me, I'm already there, I'll do it for them. Care. Just yesterday afternoon, around 2.30, I finished a meeting, and in my workplace, I was coming down, I met one of our team members. She looks a bit down and said, you okay? I said, no, no, I'm not okay, because uh, the uh, staff restaurant is closed by the time I went for lunch. I said, it's okay. I pick up my phone and I said, what do you want? I mean, she's next to me because I'm calling to the chef of the canteen. I said, what do you want? And she said, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. I said, no, 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 no. You're going to eat. I said, what do you want? And she's one of the line junior team member. She said, I wanted a sandwich. I said, fine, fine. I'm, and I'm calling the chef and she's like, no, no, it's all right. I said, no, no, no. I said to her, I have a job because of you. I delivered the sandwich to her room. I mean, not me, but my team did it. Because I had my lunch at 12, and she was serving people, and she, you know, you get the point, right? That's an example of care. At the same time, care means tough love. I make people accountable for their job. People who work with me, that they know I have three things where I have zero tolerance. Number one, discipline. No discipline. Very difficult to work with me. Number two, at most respect for every single one in the team and everyone you meet. Number three, you've got to have an open mind to keep on learning and keep getting better. These, without these three things, it'll be challenging to work with me. I'm sure the uh, live coverage has been observed by those who have worked with me. They're probably on their sofa at their room. They must be saying, yeah, that's true. <laughs> right? 
I decided that many years ago, right? And I wanted to reinforce one thing that VP mentioned. It is so true without discipline, without respect, without good values, without open-mindedness to learn things from the people we meet. The credentials we have has no values in it. Because the world does not need more credentials, the world needs more people with good values. That's what's lacking in the world. What's lacking in the world is good leadership. Nothing less, nothing more. And the last one here, patience and energy, I think you can see that by now. I live for this. I love it. Now, my purpose also, you see, um, when you know your why, you know exactly how to live with this, right? Years ago, I was able to discover it. Here's my purpose. Wherever I go, I add value to others, make a difference. Whether I'm here or anywhere in the world, I've been to over 59 countries in the world, spoken in 69 international audiences. Wherever I go, add value to people. I discovered this many years ago. Now, students, some of you may wonder, like, how do, how do we get that? During our workshops we will do in the school, we'll help you with that. Masood and I'll help you to discover that. It's not a difficult thing. Because our purpose is not coming to work every day. Our purpose is like VP mentioned at the beginning of his speech. When you step into the office, ask the question, what can I do today to make my people better because of my presence? Take a deep breath, everyone. Now, I shared my purpose, my values. Let me ask you a question. Why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? Like if you're a school captain, you should be asking to the wise captain next year, the games captain, why do you come to school every day? Let's see what they say. Come on, ready, go everybody. Have a conversation with the person next to you. A, ten, a 20 second conversation. All right, great. Let's let's move on. Let's move. On. We got about uh, fifteen, yeah, about fifteen more minutes to before the break. Now here's an example of my purpose. Just what I did yesterday. I think you'll find me over there. Not that difficult, right? Yeah. So this team over here with the books is the team from the Velana International Airport, the seaplane new terminal, MSC launch team. Last week. I was departing to an international conference, so I had the opportunity to use the lounge. I met with the lounge manager, and he came to me. So the lounge manager is the gentleman there with the bag, right, just onto, you know, onto your right side, the first neck, right next to me. He said, Afi, we need help. We want to understand what is service and how do you do that there. I said, of course. Bring your senior team next week. And he goes like, are you sure? I said, yes. And in fact, he thought it was a joke. Because why would I do that, right? He asked his manager to call me. I said, of course. We love sharing and contributing. So yesterday, he brought all his supervisors from the lounge service. So I spent a day with them, showed them what is good service, had the opportunity to meet with my team. I have no doubt that those colleagues that you see here from MSCL, by the way, those colleagues who are with the book are the colleagues from MSCL who came there. They are going to give a world-class service to every single passenger who will use that terminal because we have taken a step to inspire them. In order to contribute, you don't need to be a rich person. Because everybody in this room here, there is something you can give. 
Turn to the person next to you and say, there is something you can give to the other person. Tell them. Because sometimes we think to be generous, we need to be rich. No, 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 no. You don't have to be rich to be generous. You just need to have a generosity gene within you. And the generosity gene is understanding what I can contribute every day. And that's an example. And there are many examples, but we don't have time. So towards the last 10 minutes of my session, everything rises and falls on leadership, which means everything, everything rises and falls also on your values. How will you perform? How will you love your team? How will you care for your team? How will you look after them? How will you treat everybody in your ecosystem, including your family, your relatives, everybody else, cast on your values? And I'm going to give you five things that everybody in this room can do every single day in order to keep discovering and living your values. Because it's one thing to have good values, by the way. And it's one thing to live. Years ago, I visited a hospital in a country in the Indian Ocean. I won't tell you the name of the country. And in the hospital counter, and, and don't worry, it's not Maldives. But it's a country I often visit. Right? And it's a country, the name starts with M. I didn't say that. And in the hospital, there is an, at the entrance, at the reception, there is a writing which says, Ten Commandments of Good Service. Number one, we smile to all our customers. I said, okay, nice. Went to the reception, I said, I'm here to make a memo. And she's like, what? I said, do you have this doctor? No. I said, can I get tomorrow? We're fully booked. I went back and read the same thing to see if I got it correctly or not. You get the point here? It's easy to say, these are my values, but when you don't live those values, it has no meaning in it. Because <laughs> you can have the most nicest building in the world, but the performance of the people in the building is decided by the values of those people inside the building. Their performance is in a correlation with the values that they live. So here are the five things. Students, leaders, everybody please take notes of this. Number one is lead yourself. Meaning you have good values or you have your organizational values, your school values, you've got to live those values every single day. And if you cannot lead yourself, you can't lead other people. You've got to look after yourself. You have to be nice to yourself. You have to have a good night's sleep. You've got to live a healthy lifestyle. Because if you can't look after yourself, you can't look after the people. Right? So take a moment. What is one thing you will do every day to lead yourself? Talk to each other. What is one thing you will do? To lead yourself every day. Yeah? Ten, ten seconds conversation, please. Lead yourself is the most important thing. Most organizations and most people, they fail to achieve the success they dream and they desire because of the lack of the power in them to lead themselves. If you can't wake up in the morning to be early to your office and your organization and your school. You know, when I was the deputy captain, what time do you think I came to school? Uh, five is too early. The security won't open the gate by five. Yeah, we start at seven. I'm there six thirty. Because my students expected the best of me to be there so that I can check if everything's in order. Trust me. And and you know that's an example. Number two here: study leadership daily. You can learn leadership from anyone that you meet by reading 
leadership stories, examples, by speaking to wise people who are more experienced than you. When I meet someone, I'm not looking at what's wrong with them. I'm looking at that, what can I learn from this person? When someone new comes to my organization, when they enter from the front door, I don't look at them and say, who is he? I look at him and say, hey, welcome, welcome. My next question is, what can I learn from you? Life is easy, right, in that way. Because the problem is that we judge those people and we have some sort of a bias around it and we can't. There is something you can learn from every single one that you meet. Let me ask you a question. Who is a hero for you? A hero. Who is a hero for you? Good. Talk to each other. Who is a, who is a hero for you? Who is a hero for you? Let me ask from this table here. Who is a hero for you? The captain here from... Who is a hero for you? Anyone. She goes like anyone. You see, here is the thing. Sometimes we think hero is someone who's got lots of success in the woods and recovery. No, 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 no. A hero is the person who wakes up in the morning and, you know, clean the road. A hero is the people from the Vemco who takes the dustbin while we are sleeping. A hero are the air, air conditioned technicians. When you call them, they come and fix every single one is a hero by their own way. You are a hero, the person sitting next to you. I mean, you know, the, the security team here is a hero. The cameraman here is a hero. The sound technician is a hero. The school security, everybody is a hero. Turn to the person next to you and say, you are a hero. But if you have the open mind, you will keep learning. Number three, add value to others. Recognize, appreciate, say thank you. Guide people. This is exactly what we're talking here about. Every day, find ways to appreciate and thank you. You know, it's the job of my team to organize my transfers when I need to come down to a place. They do it every day. I want to show you something. I want to read a message for all of you. When I land in Mali International Airport, Belana International Airport, I send a message to our reservation manager and I wrote a message like this. I wrote a message, I said, Hi Dylan, thank you very much for arranging my transfer the way I needed it to be. <laughs> it's his job, but I don't take it for granted. Every time I do that, almost every week I have a trip like this, but I don't take it for granted. That's an example. All the students over here, I know most of you came here with your parents, right? Or a related brought you here? When you are leaving this session around 12 o'clock, when you see your parents, your relatives, or whoever comes to pick you up, look at them in the eyes and say, thank you so much for what you do every day. When was the last time you did that? Maybe you do that every day, but do it more. Do it more. Turn to the person next to you and say, thank you for sitting next to me. Come on, do that. <laughs> Because the person sitting next to you, I mean, the front row, obviously, we have some wise people. By the way, the, all the other students, you have a wonderful future ahead of you. You have a wonderful future ahead of you. Because in a couple of years, those who are sitting at the, at the end of the room, they're going to be in the front. Exactly. We will be back clapping from there. You know, for example, if this room is, this is the first class, this is the business class economy, and that, that is the cargo section, <laughs> they all will come to the front. Because that's the future we are wishing for you. We pray this every single day. Because you are the future of this nation. And we all. But you can come on this journey only intentionally. Right? Practice leadership, please. What you learn, apply. Apply it every day. Don't just take notes and uh, say, oh, this is nice notes, which I have no doubt it is, because all of you got wonderful handwritings. Apply it, share with people. 
And last but not least, intentionally grow. What I mean by this, this is October already. In calendar year, two more months to go. You look back in the 12 months and you look at it and you say, how have I spent my last 12 months? When you have to think so much and say, I'm not sure how it went. But when you look and say, oh my God, it's been wonderful. It's a choice we have. You are always growing as a leader if you're intentional. As a student leader, as a student, or anyone who is watching this event live, there's a great leader in you. But the great leader comes alive when you are intentional. And when you wake up in the morning and ask a question, what can I do to make this world a better place? It doesn't come alive when you wake up and say, what's in it for me in this world today? <laughs> Two different things, right? Yeah. So take a moment, everybody. Take a deep breath. What did you learn so far? Because we're almost time. What did you learn so far? Have a quick conversation with the person next to you. A quick conversation. What did you learn this morning? Now, my last message to all of you is the key to our success lies in our values. And our values determine who we become. And people see you through your values. Nothing less, nothing more. And I hope as we, as I end my part, and we're going to go for a break, and then we're going to have a session by Masood, I really hope that all the student leaders, you have taken a great note around this. Because when we do this with the schools in future, around the country, we're going to help you discover your values. When you discover yourself as a, as a great leader through great values, there's nothing to be worried because you're not going to be worried with what other people are going to say about you. Because you know that you're a great leader. When I was the deputy captain... I enter into an event. They, those days they will invite me to go to all the events. All the other students will look at me because I'm from the high school, right? I just walk and sit down like I'm the deputy captain. Right? Because I live through the valleys. So students, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank all of you for your time. And really I want to appreciate all of you for listening. And once again, VP, thanks for this wonderful initiative. And Mr. Education, and also the team that organized. I also want to specifically thank uh, Najfa, who has actually been guiding, make sure that we are here on this time. Four o'clock, she already messaged me. <laughs> Commitment. <laughs> like, I, I hear she messaged me and I said, I'm awake. <laughs> right? So take your two hands up, everybody. Two hands up, right? Love you once again. Love you. Clear three times and say thank you to the person next to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.